Taiwan is known as a foodie's paradise, and Kaohsiung's Neiman is a place where classic Chinese Taiwanese cuisine reigns supreme. In the past, Neiman's vibrant temple culture triggered big roadside banquets organized to feed hungry worshippers. But now, Neiman's roadside banquets are becoming few and far between. Today, in our Sunday special report, we tour Neiman's storied banquet culture and meet the chefs working to save it. It's June and preparations are underway at Tainan's Zhuozhen Elementary School for this year's graduation ceremony. Per tradition, the school is holding a large banquet on campus for teachers, students and their parents. We choose to hold a banquet and not celebrate in another way. This is our traditional culture. Gathering around in a circle helps us feel closer to one another. Deep-fried cod gets a splash of sweetened vinegar before it's placed on the banquet table. The banquet is set to begin at noon, and the husband and wife team Lu Zhaohui and Li Zhiyu have been preparing dishes since 5 a.m. Normally, fish prepared for a banquet would be steamed intact. But since there will be children, we're steaming fish nuggets, which are easier for kids to eat. Lu is 33 this year. He married into a family of banquet chefs. His wife's grandmother and father are both roadside banquet chefs. Five years ago, he and his wife left their Taipei jobs in retail to help her aging father prepare banquets back home. Li's hometown, Neiman, is located in the mountains of northeastern Kaohsiung. Neiman is rich in temple culture. It's especially known for the parade performances known as the Songjiang Battle Array. Because temple festivals in Neiman invariably drew at least 100 people, locals began holding large banquets to feed the crowds. Big banquets are now a unique part of the cultural landscape. Since Xue Monghui retired from the military, he's been helping his father prepare banquets. Now, with 20 years' experience, Xue is ready to take the helm of his father's business. But the road ahead won't be easy. Because there is no wind, there is no airflow. The hot air has no way to escape. It's unbearable. For all the workers, it's unbearable. Out here, it can get as hot as 37 degrees Celsius. A chef shuffles between 10 earthenware pots on gas stoves as workers attend to half a dozen walks under a canopy where other dishes are being prepared. All around, people mop sweat from their brows. Aside from food preparation, roadside banquet chefs are responsible for setting up the dining hall with tables, chairs, serviettes and utensils. Putting a banquet together is tough work, but it provides a living for a great number of families. Taking food out to the tables is a job someone's got to do. Cleaning tables after the meal and washing dishes, workers are needed for that too. One roadside banquet chef supports the livelihoods of 10 or more families, sometimes even up to 20 families. According to data from 2005, Neiman had a population of roughly 10,000 people. More than 100 of them were roadside banquet chefs. That number is much lower today. There's the aging population and the weak economy. Also, more men are marrying foreign brides. That means I miss out on business from the bride side of the family. I only get to cook for the groom side. Back in the heyday, there were some 10-odd banquets a day. That's impossible today. During the Golden Age, there were about 100 chefs. Since then, that figure has gone down to about 40 or 50. Here in Neiman, the ranks of roadside banquet chefs are half what they used to be. But the ones who remain take no shortcuts in their work. Xue uses the same ingredients his father used. He still strives to provide quality at a bargain. When the dishes are brought out and the guests say the food is as good as anything a hotel would make, that says you've reached a real level of refinement. Li, who moved from Taipei to help with the family business, said she wanted to give the traditional banquets a contemporary look. With her plating, she replaced the fake flowers and fruit carvings of old with fresh seasonal flowers. 
She updated her table settings with premium utensils. Most roadside banquets use plastic utensils because you can just wrap them up and toss them out at the end of the meal. But that results in a considerable amount of garbage. So even when I'm doing a lower-end banquet, I insist on giving my guests porcelain tableware. Lee and her husband also did away with crimson tablecloths and introduced silk napkins. Their tabletops go for a simple and elegant look. To draw in new types of clients, they've incorporated design elements from other countries. For some events, guests are seated at long tables instead of round ones. Stemmed glasses and strategic lighting produce a romantic atmosphere in the evening. We did a banquet aboard a yacht out at sea. We took the boat out to the middle of the ocean. There were snacks like meatballs, sticky rice and crispy duck divided into small portions so that they were finger food. Guests took some and ate it as they walked around. On the side, these chefs like to experiment with their menu, but classic Taiwanese dishes continue to be their calling card. Sticky rice is infused with the fragrance of sesame oil. After a quick fry in the pan, it goes into the steam basket. This crispy duck recipe was passed down through three generations. It's prepared with careful attention to the temperature of the fire so that it comes out tender and juicy on the inside. This type of banquet is unlike anything you'll find elsewhere in the world. It can only be found here in Taiwan. So we hope that our efforts, our hard work, will help these dishes live on, giving more people the chance to see them and try them. For the newest generation of Neyman's banquet chefs, the competition is tough and the customer hard to win over. The challenge ahead is striking a balance between tradition and innovation.